All right, folks, for today's project, I'm going to be painting this beautiful model of a steam locomotive, a uh, New York Central Hudson. And when I say model, I mean exactly that. This is a kit, okay? Now, I, uh, I painted the silver drive rods with uh, Viejo Steel, which is a nice silver color that's not too silvery. They have silver, aluminum, and steel. So I bought steel and that's what I painted them with by hand. Those were uh, brush painted. Um, I then gave it a coat of uh, Tester's Dull Coat, which I have discovered I do not like. So I then went over it with um, some of the uh, plaid matte color uh, spray acrylic sealer. Let me show you what this is, if I can. I went over the uh, Tester's Dull Coat with this. Uh, this is really fantastic uh, acrylic sealer for plastics. The, uh, the Tester's Dull Coat turned this thing almost gray. It was so dull. I left the, I left the, uh, the dull, 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 dull finish on the, uh, the coal tender, but in this image you can see along the top of the coal tender how gray the coal looks. Okay, so uh, after bringing back the color to a matte finish black, um, I'm going to paint this first because I'm, I've never painted a uh, model operating HO steam locomotive before and um, I'm a little uh, leery about it. So I'm going to start with this little guy here. I'm going to do all the colors on him that I want to do on my Broadway Limited New York Central J1E Hudson. And I'm going to be using these Badger colors here. These are the Badger Model Flex. This is engine black. This is dark gray, early 1941. It's also called steam engine black on their listings. This is obviously a marine type color, but it will work for this uh, steam locomotive. I hope, I've never used it before. I'm also gonna enhance some of the uh, brownish areas throughout the engine with this Model Flex Rail Brown. And this uh, Model Flex extender right here, this is their version of a retarder. Uh, I guess they didn't want to use the term retarder, so it's called extender. About four drops and a few ounces of the, um, the paint will slow down the dry time till about five to ten minutes, which will also keep it from drying too, too rapidly on the um, tip of my Pache. I'm going to be using a Pache VL1 double action airbrush for this project. Uh, this is my go-to airbrush for many, many things. Um, I will set the, uh, the, the paint flow with the wheel on that. Uh, the paints will be lifted out of the containers and into the paint cup by using these plastic pipettes. They're graduated. Uh, and I will, this has, of course, its own little uh, dropper type uh, element in the bottle on the extender. So well, I'll count out my drops using that. But uh, all that said, let's get painting. Before we start painting, a little tip I got from uh, a book on the subject written by Joe Fugate and uh, another, watching another YouTube, well actually not YouTube, this was a uh, DVD I purchased, but a piece of plastic over the bottle. It's just simply a piece of plastic bag and screw down the top. I also label what exactly this is so that when I look down into my paint box I can tell what color I have. Now I've put a, I've put a, um, a full pipette dropper full of the engine black paint into the paint cup of the Pache. And now I'm going to put a few drops, one, two, three, four, four drops of the Badger Model Flex extender into the paint. And I'm going to give it a quick little stir up. I'm going to stir it up just a bit. I'm going to just simply use 
the handle end of a paintbrush. Just give it a little stir. I have this on autofocus, and autofocus is not always friendly, so forgive me. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn up the PSI on my compressor. I'm going to go to about... Uh -huh. <laughs> I've got about 30 PSI on there going. So now I'm going to give it a little... I'm going to set the... Uh, wheel to dose out the amount of paint I want. Experiment with this on something here. All right, this paint's a little on the thick side, so I'm gonna give it a little more air. Whoops. I'm about at about 45 PSI right now. Aha, much, much better. Okay, well, here we go. I start off of one end, go across the vehicle. I guess the brush is about six to eight inches away from the uh, subject. Okay. And I have run out of paint, so I'm going to have to put a little more paint into uh, it's a little too much thinner, I think. That's why I'm experimenting on this thing. I'm going to put some more paint into the paint cup. And a couple more drops of the uh, extender. I don't want to thin it too much. And we'll come back to this. Okay, I've put a full pipette into the paint cup. And I have not used any of the uh, extender this time. Whoops. Again, this is just a plastic model. This is not this is not an HO scale model. This is not an operating train. I mean, there's no weight to this. You know, the tender is hollow, okay? So, the tender is hollow. And it seems to be going on about the same. Now, when I, when I paint the actual locomotive and tender. It'll be on the same turntable, but I will be, I will mask off the, um, the front light first. That will be masked off as well as the windows so I don't get it all nasty. Now this has a semi-gloss finish. I've read that the Badger Model Flex paints have a semi-gloss finish, which is okay. I seem to be having some kind of reaction here. I don't know if it's the, um, the, which call I put on. Although I think it might just be a little bit wet. So one of the things I will do is I will get a little, a small hair dryer and go over this with a hair dryer. Force it to dry just a little bit. First thing I need to do is clean out my airbrush. And for that, I'm going to use the Badger ready to use cleaner. I'm gonna go, I've learned a long time ago that uh, to go um, product for product as far as things like cleaners and thinners are concerned.
The setting on the dryer is at the uh, first speed. It's low, it's just warm, it's not, it's not hot. I don't want it to be hot. I don't want to melt the plastic. I don't want to melt the plastic, so it's just on hot. Now this all up on top here, this was completely wet and it looked actually looked glossy. Right now we're down to a satin finish, which is really what I'm looking for. So I'm kind of liking the results I'm getting. I like the way the silver drive rods have been reduced from their silver shade to a more uh, realistic dark shade. I want to make this locomotive look to look used but not abused. There's a term I heard from someone else on another video. Used but not abused. Also, fact of the matter is, um, when New York Central was in its heyday, these locomotives were well cared for. Uh, when they would go back to the roundhouse before they went in, the locomotive and the tender got a complete scrubbing down from front to back. Front to back. Detergent, wash, rinse, the whole nine yards, repeat. And uh, so they, they were taken care of real, real well. Now, I know there are no longer any Hudson locomotives in, a, in existence, and that is a crying shame. However, there are, whoops, they're all cleaned out. There are a lot of other um, steam locomotives around, and they have been kept up. Many of them have gotten a, a new paint new paint job uh, what, I, what I'll do with this to bring the number back on the on the on the side here I'm just gonna take a little bit of thinner and I'm just gonna I'm gonna lightly remove some of the uh, some of the paint from the numbers I can do that alrighty I use some of the Vallejo airbrush thinner uh, I started with the uh, Badger uh, cleaner and I darn near took the decal off so I don't want to do that so what I've got here now is the decal just a little bit of a Vallejo cleaner Vallejo Vallejo whatever you want to call it now I'm, I'm simply going to go over the New York Central decal now the decal on this on these models are they're old decals so they're not real real happy about being applied, let alone, I would say, being messed with the way this one is being fooled with. But um, let's just see what happens. I just want to clean these up just, and here we go. Here it comes. It's coming back. And this is being done just real rough. When I do this on my actual locomotive and tender, my Broadway Limited, it'll be taken care of a lot better than this. It'll be done a lot, a lot neater. I'm just trying to get this. Um, right now, like I say, with this vehicle, uh, this model, this literal model, I'm experimenting. All right, so we've got that back. Let's put some air on this. Dry this up. And it give, it's giving a good used look to the to the the name on the locomotive. It's no, it's no longer bright white like it was before, but it doesn't it no longer looks really, really dirty. I say I've seen films. There's a uh, an old film about New York Central. It's called. It's a series called Within the Oval, and they showed the locomotive and the uh, tender being washed before being pulled into the roundhouse for service. Okay. So here, again, here's the number on the side of the locomotive shut off the dryer, get a little bit of this Vallejo Vallejo thinner, 
and it smells like an alcohol base, so that's what it probably is. Uh, again, this is cross product use, so here we go. Here we go, numbers are coming back. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Not only are the numbers coming back, but the little letters below the number that designate the locomotive have come back. All right, so, again, I'm going to take the dryer and blow this dry. I want to get the liquid off of it. I want to dry it. Move this cup out of the way. I don't want this cup blown over here. Oh, there goes the cup. There goes the locomotive. Ah! And you can still see the silver on the underside here where I did not touch it with any paint. Like I say, these are these are hollow. <laughs> these are styrene plastic models that you assemble. In fact, they uh, don't require any glue. I did, however, glue them. Okay, I did glue them together uh, so that the parts would fit snugly to each other. Well, I will also do the do the uh, decal, the lettering on the uh, on this side of the tender. Right now, however, I want to go along and remove the paint from the bell. Now, the bell was finished with a uh, product called Treasure Gold Wax. Again, it's another product from Plaid. They, made, they make some really, really good stuff. Oh, but you see, this is colored dark black now. So I'm going to run some of this. I don't know if this will loosen up the uh, the metallic color or not. not. Well, there it is, it's exposing the metallic color. I apply some thinner and stop when I see the exposed color of the bell coming through because I do not want to remove the, uh, the gold wax that's on here. Ah, very nice. It's a, it's a wax, gold wax that's used for crafts. Now on my Broadway Limited model, I may simply cover the entire bell housing with painter's tape or, or I may, I may remove the bell from the locomotive, which I found out by accident one time, you can pop it off the locomotive. Get the brush again, go over this again, bell. back, almost back to where it was. It's going to require a little more work, but this is just give you an idea of what I'm, the look I'm, I'm, I'm going for on my locomotive. I'm going to dry this again with the dryer. There goes the brush, oh my, oh humanity. This treasure gold, it's a, a wax and you can, you can apply it with a brush and if, if there's a little too much, you can also, you, you can rub it off, you can buff it. And I actually did a little bit of buffing on this with a Q-tip, uh, a Q-tip that's used for applying makeup. And uh, it did, oh, it did a wonderful job on here. But again, you can see the, uh, the drivers have been covered, okay. Not the bottoms, because I did not paint the bottoms. So they're still showing as silver. Now, on, they also, the other thing is, on the uh, actual locomotive, they're not quite this thick. Again, this is styrene plastic, this is a model kit. So they're a lot thicker than they would be on the actual uh, Broadway Limited locomotive. What I'm gonna do when I do that locomotive, I'm gonna have a piece of track, which is taped off so the paint does not get on the the paint will not accumulate on the rails, ruining the track. It's Kato Unitrack, 
and it's the power track. So um, I've got a couple of screws that will sit in front of the locomotive and allow the drivers and the drive rods to turn while the base coat is being up applied. Uh, tell you the truth, I like it. I like it the way it is right here. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lightly spray some rail brown to the bottom part. I can also opt to use watered down acrylics in a weathering technique. Let me try it with spray first and see how the results turn out. All right, at this point, I've gone over the lower portion of the locomotive's uh, driver wheels, uh, the pilot wheels, the rear trucks, as well as the wheels and trucks of the caboose using rail brown. Now that was sprayed on, okay? That was sprayed on first. Then I went over with a thinned, thinned down coat of the rail brown, which I thinned with a, um, using some of the thinner and applied with a small brush. And I came up, this is the brush I used in fact, okay? I came up under the cylinders like so. Actually, because this is a hollow mo plastic model, I held it in my hand and worked from the bottom. I also then, added some of the rail brown to the front pilot or the uh, cow catcher portion of the front of the locomotive here and you can see just a little bit now i also added some to the front coupler which on this model is very accurate it's down in the pilot as it was on the actual uh new york central hudson locomotive Again, here are the wheels of the tender and the trucks have been handled in the same way. Gone over them with a spraying of the uh, rail brown first. I'm really not sure if this is showing up on camera very well. Let me kill the light some. Okay. Uh, let's put the light back on. Hopefully we still have some light. I don't think the light burned out. Okay. Well, at any rate, at this point, I, there's, it just seems a little too much brown is here on the wheels and on the, the understructure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, go over that, I think with either some grimy black or some steam engine black. I think I'm going to go over it with a very, very light dusting of grimy black the airbrush. So that's what I'm going to do next. Well, upon examining what grimy black looks like, it's actually a very dark gray. And that's not quite the look I'm going for. So I've got some of the Badger Model Flex uh, steam engine black. And that's a very dark black. And in fact, it's kind of a bluish black. It almost looks like it's my eye. I'm going to get um, way, way back. I'm probably about a foot back from the model with the airbrush. And I'm just gonna go over like so. Go down from the top. And it's ever so subtle. I like this. Oh, I like this. I really, really do. I like the effect I'm getting here. All right, you see that? This is kind of a, almost a sandy brown. I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, but I think I figured out the look I want here. Steam engine black over the top. I hate when that happens. <laughs> but I do like the effect that I've gotten here. That's really taken the brown down a notch. Um, all right, the next thing to do, hit it with the air dryer so that we can dry the color, dry the paint. Oh, 
yeah, I like this a lot. Really a lot. Oops. Man overboard. I'm going to hit it with a little more steam engine black on this side again. Just a little more. This is this right here is still a little bit too brown right here. So I'm going to darken that. I still have some paint left in the cup. Let me darken that down. And there we go. I like it. I like it. Dry it again. Now at this point, I think any more coloring I'm going to do, I may just do with some weathering powders. But the airbrushing is definitely finished on this model. And that's how it's going to go on the Broadway Limited. I think I got the look I wanted. I think I've gotten the look I want. I'm, pre I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. Yeah. Yeah, pretty pleased. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's what I was looking for. And it, it doesn't have to be even on both sides, because in real life it would not be even on both sides. But we're pretty darn close to being even on both sides. I like this. I like the way this turned out. The other thing I did with the, uh, the thinned uh, rail brown, I used it on the water hatch on the tender. I added just a little bit of rust. And that happens regardless. I added a little bit of rust. What I may do with, with this model to make it really, really, really complete besides adding some handrails and whatnot uh, along the, um, the boiler, I may go ahead and I may put a real coal load down on top of its little plastic coal load. Only because I think that looks really, really keen. Keen? You heard it here first, folks. I think it looks keen. Right there, I think that looks real, real nice. Yep. Onto the Broadway Limited. See you then.